let's learn how to use the infinity pump. We've got our teal Moog infinity pump here, a bag, some water formula, and our G tube that we're going to be infusing the formula into. So the first thing is we can talk about turning the pump on and the settings. So on the pump, we've got our on off button here. So we'll press and hold for about three seconds. It's going to go through a serial number, which you don't need to worry about, software number. And then eventually it'll come to our rate screen. So rate is um, displayed here in the bottom left corner. And that is how fast the pump is going. The other setting that we have is the dose. So then if we click our rate dose button, you can see dose in the bottom screen there. Most of the time we're going to have our dose set to infinity, but I'm just going to use the clear button to clear both of those settings and we can practice setting them all ourselves. Your dietitian will tell you what these settings should be. So if you're not sure, you can always call into our office to check what your nutrition plan is. So to adjust the rate and the dose, we're going to use these plus and minus buttons here on the side. So I'll press and hold the plus. And I like to point out that we start in decimal points. So say this is 2.7, not 27. So if you feel like your pump is running slower than it should be, make sure that we don't have a decimal point in there. It's kind of like the kitchen timer where once it gets to 10, it starts going really fast. So let's see if we can get to 60. I'm trying not to go past it. Of course, if you do go past it accidentally, you can always just hit the minus button to go back down. So 60 milliliters per hour. And then we'll set our dose. Again, that's how much formula it's going to administer before the pump stops. Some patients, particularly pediatric patients, might be given a dose by their dietitian. Say, for example, you wanted to do 90 milliliters every three hours or something like that. You would set the dose to 90, whatever your dietitian says. But most of the time, we're just going to hold that plus button all the way until we get to infinity. So that's just after 3,000. The pump does go faster here in a minute and that will give us our infinity dose, INF. And so infinity means that the pump is just going to run until it runs out of formula. So it's just gonna keep pumping as long as it can. You've got those settings set and it will save these settings. So you don't need to do this every time, but it's good to know how to program it in case the pump gets cleared accidentally or something like that. We'll go ahead and turn it off and then we can switch over to our bag. And so we've got our bag, they're all individually wrapped. We're gonna use one bag every 24 hours. So once you open a bag, you can use it overnight, the next day, and then get a new bag the next night, or depending on what time of day you typically change your bag. So we can open this up. And so when I say the pump lasts, or the bag lasts 24 hours, that's the pump and the tubing, it's all connected in this one piece. And so the first thing when we take the bag out of the tubing is we want to pull the sides apart because it's very flat here on the back and we need to make sure that there is room for the formula to go in. Then we can take our formula, give it a little shake, and then most of them just have a twist cap and we can pour our formula into the bag. So most brands, the formula can be out at room temperature for eight to 12 hours. And so your dietitian will probably give you a plan for how many cartons of formula to pour into the bag at a time. So for example, three cartons every 12 hours or something like that. Once we get our formula in the bag, we can close the cap and I try and get some of the extra air out of the tubing. So if you're holding the bag up, you can kind of give it a little squeeze, but my favorite method is to kind of pull this down and then we can twist that cap on. Now it's not a very satisfying twist. It's like less than a quarter turn. So you wanna just get it nice and snug. And most of the time I don't quite get the threads on straight all the way. So you can use the palm of your hand to snap it down. Don't stress about it too much though. The main thing is just that the cap isn't going to come off accidentally. So I'm gonna set it there. And it's important that the formula stays at the bottom of the bag. So I'm careful not to lie flat because you could get air into the tubing. I like to have the bag kind of upright. You can even have it flop over on itself as long as we've got the formula there in the bottom of the bag. To connect the tubing to the door, um, this part is gonna flip open. And I like to take two thumbs on either side to push in and up, and that will open the door. If you're having a hard time getting it open that way, 
you can take a thumb and pinch right between these two notches here, and that will open the door. I prefer the two thumb method just because this little piece here can sometimes crack over time. So using two thumbs to get that up. Then we can take our bag tubing, and this part you can treat like a rubber band and wrap it around the black wheel. And then we can pull these tubes and stretch them back and it should just snap into place. It has plastic on one side so it can't go in the wrong way. We can just wrap it around and pull it back. Sometimes people pull it too far and if that happens, loosen it up a little bit and it should just snap into place. Sometimes people also ask if it's supposed to be tight here around the wheel and it is because this is going to spin around and that is how it pushes the formula through. We got that all connected and we can close the door, make sure that we're not pinching the tube on either side there. And then the next thing before we start our tube feeding is going to be to prime the tubing. So we'll turn the pump on. Press and hold for a few seconds. And then before we start priming, you wanna make sure to take the cap off. So if it's on, take that off because that air needs somewhere to escape. Then on the pump, we can press and hold the prime button. And so we'll press and hold that for a few seconds. And then we can let go. This pump has auto prime enabled, so it'll pump it most of the way. Typically with auto prime, we're gonna need to push that prime button three times. It's gonna get the tubing, the formula most of the way. Then we'll push it again to get it the rest of the way. And then a third time to stop. You can see on the screen, it says to stop push prime. And so if it's getting close to overflowing, you can go ahead and hit stop or prime to stop. So we'll just give that a minute to get to its first stopping point. It's not the fastest, but at least it doesn't need that long. <laughs> All right, so there's our first little stopping point. So then we can hit the prime button one more time. And then I'm gonna be ready to push it a third time once it gets to the end and stop. If you wanna let some drips come out, you can, but you don't necessarily have to. I can see the formula right in there, so I know I made it to the end. So I'm gonna put my cap on just for now. And then before I connect it to our tube here, we want to flush the tube with water. So whenever we start or stop the tube feeding, we're gonna flush the feeding tube. So I've got my 60 milliliter syringe and we wanna flush the tube with just room temperature water. Minimum 30 milliliters. I say while you're there, you might as well do a full 60 unless your dietitian has told you otherwise. Um, so 60 is a full syringe, 30 would be half a syringe. We'll go over here to our tube. Now, before I connect the syringe, I do recommend pinching or kinking the tube before you take the cap off to make sure that we're not gonna get gastric contents coming out of the tube. That can be a little bit messy. So for me, I usually just kind of bend it over on itself and use that to hold the tube. Then I can open the cap and we will just connect our syringe, let go of our little kink, and then we can push that water through. Then we can pinch the tube. And then once I've got that capped off, I'll let it go. And then we can connect our pump tubing. Take our cap off. Again, before you open that port, we'll just pinch it off. Twist that in. Now, when you're connecting the pump tubing or the syringe, always make sure it's just finger tight. No need to crank it. I get a decent number of calls from people that can't get it un, um, unattached. So just finger tight is all you need. And then we can come back over to our pump and we'll hit run pause. Oh, it beat me to it. So this is actually an alarm. And so every three minutes, if it's not running, it's going to alarm and say push run to feed. And so my, my big tip when it's alarming is to read the message on the screen. So now that I've gotten that message, I can hit run, run pause to make it stop beeping. <laughs> um, we'll talk more about alarms in a little bit, but um, now that we've got that cleared, 
we can go ahead and hit run pause and it will start pumping away. And so we can see our formula start to go through that tubing. On the pump, you'll hear it run, pause, run, pause, because that's how it's adjusting the speed. But on the pump, as long as we've got this little circle going around that says run, it's doing what it's supposed to do. If you need to stop the pump for any reason, maybe if you're not feeling well, if you need to take a shower, whatever the case may be, you can hit run, pause, and that will stop it. And you can turn the pump off so we don't get that alarm again.